In one of our earliest videos, I shared some tips for singers, so they were really basic things um, just to kind of get you started, things to think about. Not warm-ups, not technique, not going into any of the nitty-gritty, and so I wanted to do a little follow-up video for that because it's been quite a, a while since we posted that one. So I wanted to talk about four things that you can do as a singer or as someone who uses their voice a lot to up the ante of your singing game and to take better care of your voice. So let's get into it. One thing that I have found super helpful in my singing and in my speaking is to check in with my posture. And I don't necessarily mean to sit up straight and tall or, you know, do whatever you were taught as a kid as far as what it means to have good posture. But I do mean to be aware of any things that you do with your body that either make it easier for you to produce the kind of sounds you want to produce or makes it more difficult. So I don't necessarily believe that a good performance or a good singer always uses the exactly textbook technical perfect posture. For example, we went to see Tool for our anniversary back in November and Maynard is an incredible performer, but he doesn't use what a traditional voice teacher or singing coach would consider good posture. He's like squatting and he's like leaning forward. And he's very, very physical, very engaged. And that's because he's a performer. He's delivering a whole performance, not just a vocal performance. And so he's doing something that's visually interesting. So bear in mind that what you do with your body isn't just about aligning yourself properly for singing. It's about delivering a good performance. There's one thing that I do that tends to make it a little more difficult for me to sing and that is I tend to poke my neck really far forward. So I, it's like, this is an exaggeration, but it's kind of like this. And what that does is that just makes all these muscles through here tense up really badly. And so I've noticed that if I, if I pull my head back, if I make a conscious effort to keep my head a little bit farther back, little more like this. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but a little more like this. Some of that stress is kind of out of these muscles here and it feels a little bit freer. It feels like I'm having a little, uh, I have a little bit easier time with making a nice clean, um, clean sound when I'm singing. So now on to my second point, which is to stay engaged with your breath. So always be thinking about your breathing and your phrasing which is a little bit easier to do when you're singing. Which is a little bit easier to do when you're singing, at least in my case, than it is when I'm speaking. When I'm singing, everything's broken down into neat phrases, and so you know when you're supposed to breathe. When we're speaking, we don't necessarily have that, especially if we're extemporizing, like I do when I teach. So I have to remind myself to chillax just a little bit, make sure I'm not holding a lot of tension in my rib cage and to just breathe in between my sentences adequately. Because what feels like a long pause or a long breath to me is not. Um, and it makes it easier on me in the long run and it helps me speak with more support and be able to speak for a longer amount of time. So my last tip for you guys is to get really, really familiar with your voice, both your speaking voice and your singing voice. Do this by recording yourself singing. You can do video of yourself singing, which is great for the posture side of things. Um, but definitely do audio of yourself. Since we've been recording from home, um, we've been doing a lot of the vocals here in this room. And I've been comping all the vocals, so I've become really, really familiar with my own voice in a way that I've never been before. Also doing these videos has helped me kind of get to know my voice a little bit better on the, the speaking side. but. From a, a singing perspective, I've learned a lot about what my voice really sounds like. And it's really hard to listen to yourself objectively. Um, not just really hard, but I think it's probably impossible to be completely objective when you're listening to your own vocal. But doing that, learning how to edit and comp vocals, um, has allowed me to understand what timbres and what tones come naturally to my voice and what ones do not. And that's a really important thing that I don't think people talk about enough. When we sing, 
in a tone or a timbre that isn't natural to our voice, our voice tends to wear out a little more quickly. Um, so that's not saying you can't ever sing that way, but it's really important for me knowing, okay, on this song, I use a little bit more of a bluesy sound. On this song, I use a little bit more of a, um, you know, a neo-folkish kind of sound. Um, and the differences in timbre allow me to understand which, which one's going to be more difficult for me and thus choose songs in a set in a way that doesn't wear my voice out, which is really important when you're doing shows that are three hours long or four hours long and you don't really take a whole lot of breaks or anything like that. Or if you do take a break, you're talking to people. So take some time to get really familiar with your voice. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and like and comment. Share a little bit of your routine down below if you have a routine or um, if you have questions, I will do my best to answer them if you just put them in the comments. Uh, be sure to follow us on all of the social medias, on the Facebook, on the Twitter, on the Instagram, on the TikTok. We're on TikTok now. Look at us. Look at us. Um, anyway, thank you guys so much, and we will be back again next week with another video about our tour.